Um, and you're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. This is a very complex and difficult issue. I want to also thank Deputy uh, Director Bottaselli for testifying before the subcommittee. Um, this is also quickly a quickly changing issue, and the positions of conservatives and progressives alike are evolving as we learn from experiences of states with legalization initiatives. According to a Gallup poll taken in October, 58 percent of the American people favor the legalization of marijuana. Over the past eight years, 20 states and the District of Columbia have passed laws permitting the use of marijuana for medical conditions. And in 2012, Colorado and Washington chose to legalize, tax, and regulate limited amounts of marijuana for recreational use. I believe the purpose of today's hearing is worthwhile to review the position of Federal agencies with respect to States that are legalizing marijuana, both for medicinal purposes and recreational uses. The Office of National Drug Control Policy serves as a very critical role in balancing our Nation's drug control efforts by coordinating government-wide public health and safety initiatives that address drug use and its consequences in our communities. In addition, the Department of Justice is charged with enforcing the Federal Controlled Substances Act, and, is <clears throat> and it issued guidance to prosecutors in August on marijuana enforcement. Mr. Chairman, I'm thankful that ONDCP is here today, but as you know, I believe this hearing would have been more informative with the Justice Department at the table. I know our offices work together to try to find a mutually acceptable date. And your decision to move forward today with ONDCP alone is not your prerogative. I hope we can continue to work together in a bipartisan way as we have in the past to get the viewpoints of the other agencies involved. Personally, I share your concerns about the negative health effects of marijuana, particularly on the youth in my district and across the country. Even when it is used for medicinal purposes, people should understand very clearly that smoking marijuana is dangerous to their lungs and their hearts, and it results in a wide range of negative health effects. Apart from health concerns, however, I also have serious questions about the desperate, desperate impact of the Federal Government's enforcement policies on minorities. After reviewing the FBI uniform crime reports and state databases, on one article found, and I quote, police arrest blacks for marijuana possession at a higher rate than whites in every state and nearly every city and county, despite the two races using marijuana at equal rates. My home state of Maryland has similar disparities in enforcement. In October, the American Civil Liberties Union issued a report finding that, and I quote, police arrest blacks for marijuana possession at higher rates than whites in every county in Maryland, end of quote, accounting for 58 percent of arrests for marijuana possession. These disparities have a real impact on people's lives, their families, and their communities. An arrest for even the smallest amount of marijuana can disqualify a person for public housing, student financial aid, or even employment for life. These are the exact opportunities that so many low-income individuals need to lift themselves out of poverty. I think the President was exactly right when he said last week, middle-class kids don't get locked up for smoking pot. Poor kids do. African-American kids and Latino kids are more likely to be poor and less likely to have the resources and the support to avoid unduly harsh penalties, and I would add to that records, criminal records, that remain with them for a lifetime. For these reasons, Maryland has chosen to decrease penalties to 90 days for possession of marijuana in small amounts. 
It also required courts to consider a defendant's use of medical marijuana as an affirmative defense, and it permitted research on medical marijuana. Mr. Chairman, I previously served as the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Criminal Justice and Drug Policy, so I understand that there are various components to this debate. But one thing does concern me greatly, how in some states uh, one can purchase marijuana, and the people in my state and in my district are getting arrested and serving sentences. And, and it just seems to me there's something not right about that. And I'm hoping that you will address that, Mr. Botticelli, because this is, these are serious consequences. It's one thing when you, when you have equal enforcement, uh, but it's another thing when some people are uh, engaged in um, purchasing marijuana in the streets and other ones in the suites. And so what happens is that you have unequal enforcement and you have many African-American young men, as you well know, spending long sentences sitting in prison, while others uh, law enforcement don't even touch. So uh, those are the kinds of concerns that I have, Mr. Chairman, and I'm hoping that we will get to some of that uh, today. And with that, I yield back.